All right. So um, in our previous class yesterday, we talked about a very important um, uh, tool in project management, which is a Gantt chart. And specifically, we were talking about creation of schedules. And we discussed how this tool is used to display uh, the activities and how these activities are sequencing with each other and also the duration and uh, all in all give us just a summary of uh, the project and how the project will be flowing. Now, today we are going to continue under our main theme of project time management and we are going to look at the last topic which simply deals with the project time management techniques. So the techniques that we are going to look at are simply uh, three. The first one being critical path method. The second one being critical chain scheduling. And then the last one being PET, which is an abbreviation for project evaluation review technique. All right, so we can begin with our first technique, which is a critical path method. So under the critical path method, we first need to understand what do we mean by critical path method, which is also abbreviated as CPM. So CPM is a network diagramming technique used to predict the total project duration. Now, if you have been uh, following, you, are, you can realize that uh, all the steps that we looked at since the first uh, uh, stage was just all about trying to come up with uh, a pro the project duration or an estimation of the total project duration. If you look at, for example, the, the schedule, okay, the schedule shows how you know, various activities are connected to each other and how they are flowing and their uh, individual duration. But all in all, it helps us so that we can be able to have a clear picture of the total duration of a given project. Okay. So under um, critical path method now, we begin to look, I mean techniques, we begin to look at... Um, Sorry, under critical path, which is among the, the time management techniques under project management, we begin to look at how we can be able to better estimate the total project duration given all the information that we have talked about under uh, creating of a schedule. So uh, the critical path method utilizes the sequencing diagrams. Of course, if you remember, we talked about two uh, different diagrams. We talked about the first one, which was the activity on arrow. And then we talked about the second one, which was the pre precedence diagramming method. So now the critical path method utilizes both diagram and we can we'll be able to see how you can be able to uh, project the duration of time using critical path method technique on both of these uh, different diagrams. So a critical under critical path method, there is what is known as a critical path, which is the whole central thing of this method. Because under this method, we simply just try to find a critical path under project implementation and then we begin to use that critical path in order to understand or make estimations or an estimate of the total project duration. So you might wonder what is a critical path. So a critical path for a project is simply a series okay, of activities that determines the earliest time by which the project can be completed. All right, so it is also known as slack or float. So this is more like a sequence of only the uh, activities that are vital within a project that will help us determine the time or the earliest time by which this given project that we want to implement is more likely to be completed. 
All right, it is also known as it finding the slack or the float of a given uh, project. So as we scroll down, uh, as you can see on our screen there, we have got an example of the first uh, method under sequencing, okay, or diagramming method under sequencing of activities, which is the activity on arrow diagram. And on this um, activity on arrow diagram, we can be able to see various activities that also have got duration attributed to each one of them. So with this given information, we can go ahead and be able to derive a critical path method. Okay. All right. So the first thing that we do is we pick um, we pick a root or a sequence from the beginning without going backwards until we reach the end of the uh, the last activity or event. So we begin with the top sequence of activities. So when we move from event one to event two, how long will it take? It is going to take us one. So you begin to write. So A, okay. A is equal to one, isn't it? So we'll write one down here. Okay. Write one. So we'll call this P1 to indicate path one. Okay. Since we're trying to find out, we're trying to derive a critical path. So the critical path will be derived by uh, trying to experiment the various paths that are contained in our given project. And then we see among the paths, which paths is giving us the earliest possible time that we can use to finish our given project. Using, okay, put that in mind, using the most vital activities involved in the given project. So uh, we call this uh, P1, okay, we call this P1, so P1 is equal to uh, event A, okay, which is 1. Then from event A, from, from uh, activity A, which is running from event 1 to event 2, we move from event 2 to event 5, which is D. So we we'll say D here, okay. So we say plus, which is 4. And then from D, you go to H, which is 5 to 6 here. And then we have a duration of 6 down here. So we say plus 6. Say plus H. Okay. Then from here, we'll move to event 8 which will be J, so we say plus J, okay, plus J, which is 3, and what do we have in total, we have 1 plus 4, which is 5, plus 6, which is 11, plus um, 3, which is 14. All right, so we are done with the first path and the estimated um, the estimated duration for this given activity is 14. Now, this is not the only path that we can be able to find in this given project. Therefore, we must now go back to the drawing board again and ensure that we test out all the paths that are involved in this given project. And just using the same technique, you move from A to, I mean from event 1 to event 3, which is B, then from event 3 to event 5, which is E, then from 5 to uh, 6, which is H, 
then from 6 to uh, 8 which is J and you'll be able to have uh, path 2 here okay and then when you add it will give you 16 days then again you come back you move from event 1 to event 3 B from event 3 to event 6 which is F and then from event uh, 6 to event 8 here J and you have uh, path 3 here which is B F J B F J and then you add these Okay, what do you end up having? You end up having nine days until you go to the last one, which is going to be part four. And when you add it, to give you 14 days. Okay. Now, since the critical path is the longest path through the network diagram, path two, B, E, H, and J is the critical path for project X. All right. So, when we're doing an estimation, isn't it? We must be able to find the, the time which we know to say, okay, all the estimations we have made are not going beyond this given time. So in order for us to be safe, then we must be able to, uh, we must be able to watch this, uh, stick or make sure we stick to the, longest path but again what is very important to consider is we must be able to consider the most vital activities okay that are involved in a given project and we'll be able to look at that under our next diagram under the precedence diagramming method the weakness of the uh the weakness of this diagram the activities on arrow is that it will only rely on the duration Okay, but when we look at the other method or diagram, which is the precedence diagramming method, we'll be able to see that it's not just about the duration, okay, or which which path has got the the least duration, but it will be also about the activities involved in that given path that you have derived. So under this diagram. Uh, our critical path has been uh, found and it has been found to be path 2 because it is the longest path through the network diagram and it is the safest uh, path that we can land on. So uh, there is um, an exercise that you can try out. I'm not saying you should send this exercise to me but it will be just something to help you out with uh, practicing of what we have talked about so as you can see we have got activities here we have got initial nodes which are the events and also final nodes isn't it so when we move from event one to event two then we have activity a and then activity a has got an estimated duration of two okay so then we move to b so b is coming from two to three so the first thing you have to do is you have to draw an arrow on activity diagram given this information. Then from there, you can be able to start deriving uh, the paths that are involved. And then once you derive that, then you look at the longest path through the network and that will become your critical path uh, network. All right, so that is on the arrows. I mean, that is on the activity on arrows diagram okay all right now we can look at um, the other method which you should fall under the precedence diagramming uh, method uh, structure as you can see we have got a box here which is representing the activity instead of the activity being represented on the arrow it is being represented in the box and then in each box we have got figures on each corner okay and these figures on each corner the figure on the top right corner represents what is known as the LEST start time the figure on the right corner represents the LEST finish time the figure on the bottom 
uh, right corner represents the earliest list time and then the figure on the bottom right corner represents the uh, list the late finishing time of that given activities okay all right so now when we want to come up with uh, the figures uh, in a given in a given uh, diagram okay you'll be given for example uh, figures here uh, for the start time and then also the duration okay in each box okay all right so when you move from um, this activity here starting time okay to this event here right we expect that at the point where this event finished that's the point where this event begins so if you look at this one so the earliest finishing time is where is on the uh, top right corner so the earliest finishing time for this event is zero therefore this one will start at the time when this one finish which is zero which will be the earliest starting time for this given activity okay and then for us to know the earliest finishing time for this activity we will have to add the duration of this given activity from the time when this activity started so in this scenario we'll add five plus zero and what are we going to end up having we are going to end up having a five Okay, all right. Now, uh, before we can move to this other activity C, when you look at the nature of activity C, you discover that activity C is dependent not only on activity A, but it is also dependent on activity B. Therefore, activity C can only progress or can only start once both activity A and activity B has been concluded or has finished by that what we mean is activity a is finishing on five however activity b when it's on five has not yet finished and it will keep on going therefore since activity b is still in progress then activity c cannot begin until activity b which is on progress has also completed the its earliest finishing time meaning the earliest start time for activity C is not going to be uh, 5 uh, uh, it's not going to be 5 which is the earliest finishing time for activity A but it is going to be 10 the earliest finishing time for activity B because activity B was the last activity to finish so as you can see the earliest starting time for activity C becomes 10. Okay? And then the earliest finishing time for activity C will become an addition of the duration plus the time it started, which will result in 17. So, uh, I'm sure that is, uh, that is not hard. And uh, as we were moving, we were moving in the right direction okay we were moving in the right direction and we were dealing with the top uh, figures of each box representing each given activity okay so this one is what is known as a forward pass since we are moving forward so a forward pass is an analysis technique that is used to derive uh, the duration of an activity uh, moving it forward on a given precedence diagramming method so forward pass now we are not yet done okay we are not yet done because the aim is for us to come up with the critical path method of this given diagram and we can only do that once we have both the forward pass and the backward pass all right so 
to start with the uh, backward pass now we have to start looking at the bottom figures of which given a uh, box that is representing uh, a given activity so for that one we are even going to change the color and we are going to use i don't know if it is maroon this one but it looks red and maroonish so for the backward pass we shall deal with it figures that are found on the bottom of each given activity so now for us to find the least the late finishing time isn't it it has to be the time when this activity finished which, will, which is 17 and therefore the late finishing time will also become 17 okay and then to find the late starting time, we'll have to subtract the time when it finished from the duration it took for it to finish. So if we say 17 minus 7, we'll end up having 10. Okay. And then for us to now move to uh, from, activity, from activity C to activity B and also to activity C to activity A. It will have to for us to find the late finishing time. Okay, it will have to be the time at which this activity C also uh, finished, meaning the late finishing time for both activity A and activity B becomes 10 here, becomes 10, which is this one here. All right, so this one is a backward pass now. And then to find the late finishing, I mean, the late starting time for B under the backward pass, we'll have to get the late finishing time and subtract it from the duration. So 10 minus 10 will end up giving us 0. 10 minus 5 will end up giving us 5. All right, then as we move now to our starting event, instead of getting the late finishing time of five, we are going to get it, the late finishing time of zero. Why? Because this activity is now dependent on these two activities, isn't it? And then since we are under the backward pass, instead of getting the time or the maximum time will get the minimum time to reach this event and therefore we'll get a zero okay and that's how we derive our backward pass backward pass now since we have the backward pass and the, the forward pass we can be able to now start uh, deriving the slack and the float for each given activity that is represented in this given diagram so we have got activity a here okay so the way of it is you have to be subtracting the bottom figures okay which is the earliest starting time sorry least and late so let me even change the color so the color would be okay let's use green for our calculations all right so for activity a we'll say Activity A, the slack value Okay, we just put it in brackets 
would be equal to the least okay the late start time ls minus the earliest starting time so the one below should subtract with the one on top of it vertically so under a we'll say 5 minus 0 which will give us 5 if we say 10 minus 5 it will still give us 5 okay and then we continue with the rest of the activities so we say b Okay. B here will say zero minus zero, which will be equal to zero. Meaning, even if we subtract these other ones, they'll still give us zero. So, ten minus ten will still equal to zero. Meaning, the slack value for A is five, but the slack value for B is zero. Okay. Then we'll go on activity C. Activity C. We'll say 10 minus 10, it will be equal to 0. equal to zero okay so the slack value for c becomes zero now how do you know that this activity is vital for this given project so you can tell by looking at the slack value and activities that have got a slack value of zero are activities that should not be tempered with why because this activity does not have any spare time for it to lag behind. If you look at activity A, which, has, which is having 5, it means activity A can even start 5. I don't know if these the durations are in minutes or in hours. If they are in hours, we can say it can start 5 hours late and it will still not affect the duration of the given project. Why? Because this one is moving in tandem with activity B in order for it to start activity C. And this one is only taking half of the time as this one is going to take. Alright? Okay, so the most important and vital activities that should not be disturbed in order to disturb the total duration of a given project are those activities that have a slack value of zero and it is those uh, activities that end up forming the critical path for the given project so in this uh, given project that was being implemented represented by these activities we have activity c here and then we also have activity b here and then also the starting activity here. Meaning the critical path is moving like this or vice versa. So that's how you determine the critical path and also come up with the duration. So the duration will simply be 10 plus 7 which will be 17, isn't it? So this is the estimated duration for this given activity using the critical path method technique or 
analysis. Okay.